This is the journey to one Africa. But I receive new culture, I'm sure, even uh, in your own uh, place. Uh, when you visit somebody, in this case, when you have visited us, I don't want to give a speech. I don't want to give a speech to my guests. I want to have a conversation, heart to heart conversation. Uh, it, it would be strange for me to host visitors and then uh, I take a piece of paper and start reading. That, that is out of the ordinary in terms of uh, the cultural aspects of Serbs. Uh, 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 so, I want, uh, I mean, we are talking about leadership, we are talking about uh, uh, an Africanism, we are talking about the change that uh, we should have had long ago and still want to have, uh, and of course, Questions always come up uh, about why are we where we are today? Uh, meaning Rwanda, meaning Nigeria, meaning Africa. And it's not a simple matter. Because Africa, I don't think anyone Certainly, I know for Nigeria and for ourselves, I know better about our country, of course. Uh, I don't think anyone is happy that Africa is where it is uh, when you look at uh, the rest of the world. We should be in a much better place than where we are. There's no question about it. And maybe we we'll continue to have a conversation about that. And why is it common to all of us, meaning Africans, from north, south, east, west, central, wherever. Uh, and uh, my, my problem has always been and continues to be, and we, uh, we have conversations among ourselves, leaders of this continent, but still we don't uh, <coughs> see much progress. Why? Why with all the people, resources of all kinds, in actual fact, the, the fact that even across that rest of the world where we see things better than here, those contribute, contributing to the well-being of those places, in most cases, come from Africa. Doesn't matter whether you go to Yes, to Europe, wherever you will find very good Africans uh, at the top of the ladder, almost uh, in every sector, making therefore these vital contributions to these countries, to parts of the world. Then you come back, a continent. It's uh, some people are aware of. In fact, uh, incredibly aware of. But those are few. The hundreds of millions are barely making a living. And uh, 
So we talk about this every day, at least for the time I have been here. Uh, it's now running into three decades. Uh, the struggle is about that, the questions are about that, and uh, we keep measuring, we find uh, so I'm, I'm trying to imagine that what my country goes through, what you all go through, trying to answer this question, is what people you lead in your states are going through. And that's what is going on in your minds, the leaders of those states, the governors. And that's what's going on in the minds of uh, other leaders, uh, whether it is a president, ministers, uh, and so on and so forth. There, is, uh, there are these similarities. So how, how do we answer this question? We're talking about leadership because we're talking about leadership to deliver with people certain goods around the development. Security, stability, development, good governance, all kinds of things. We're also talking about Pan-Africanism because we are saying there is a common problem across the continent. So we really have the same questions to answer. And who else is going to do that? It's you and me. But it's also those people that we lead that must be a part of it, if you will. Uh, so how do we break out of this cycle of our continent. And when I talk about breaking out of this cycle, I, I, I mean sometimes we have to start a little bit from the beginning, a little bit of history uh, needs to be uh, put into account. We are not where we are, that we are not up about uh, by accident. Or we are not staying there uh, and not making the headways we want to make. Again, not by accident. It's because of certain things we can identify, talk about, you know, in your place, in my place, in Mother African's place, and things you can feel and touch and that can actually be addressed. Now, the bigger question is, and, and that's what I mentioned earlier, because we have to be examining why are we where we are when. Uh, the desire was to be completely in a much better place. And why does it happen when you have actually everything that we need to be where we want to be? That now comes around the same word that is repeated very often by everybody, everywhere, and so on and so forth. And that's leadership. But leadership alone uh, is not a panacea. It, it, it has many things that uh, interact with that. You have uh, to be feeling depressed about the problems of where you are coming from. You have therefore to be having a vision to say, but that's really where we want to be, and that's the way to get there. 
In fact, and in short, we need to be angry about, very angry about this nonsense that goes on forever around us or about us. that does not deliver the answer to this question, both of which we know and actually have the means to deal with. Let me use a quick example of uh, my country, my history, and which I know is similar. But just expanding it to other areas quickly to inform us of what the obstacles are and that shouldn't be there. When I was a kid, four years old, uh, turbulence, uh, you know, political turbulence, this country was at its height. Uh, my family were exiled in Uganda. I became a refugee when I was four years old. I stayed in a refugee situation for 25 years. I stayed in a camp, a refugee camp, for a good 20 years in a place where that man uh, is born, the one who said, uh, yeah, so who pretended to be a governor of uh, one of, <laughs> from Uganda. That same district where he is born is where he grew up as a refugee. Now, but it's not about that story that, that I want to, yeah, to talk so much about. It's a different it's about what the country was going through around the time of uh, independence. That's when many of those refugees happened. So it was called independence. And uh, of course, it produced refugees. Later on, it gave us a genocide. I'll tell you a little bit of it, but I'm trying to bring it up to try and expand it and show the problems afflicting the rest of Africa uh, that we are able to resolve or should be and we don't and we keep running around asking ourselves questions about leadership because I think you are, we are talking about leadership therefore that uh, should be able to uh, 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 address these issues. So those who came after the independence were also called leaders. Uh, now, I'm trying to bring the connection between what was happening then and what is happening now that people don't uh, become sensitive to and, and address and that is so we became refugees uh, UNHCR the body of the UN that looks after refugees or is around the camps you know, driving vehicles giving us food and by the way, they are still in the business today, doing that, in different places, <laughs> and uh, with the different people who came after us. So, that in itself became an industry. But it is not an industry of UNHCR. No, it's an industry of the other rest of the world especially the developed world. Um, but we always feel good about uh, giving donations here, money there, to go and keep 
these uh, innocent human beings of Africa being fed and surviving. And so they were to address it. And then, I don't even want to blame uh, I mean, the rest of the world. First, uh, independence was for, from colonialism. So after colonialism, when we got independence, there are people who are being fed. And um, so I, I, I don't want to blame those people. I want to blame ourselves. I want to blame us. How do we keep in this state of affairs? So the industry developed something else associated with it. Some at that time were, of course, being taken to, to Europe, to Belgium, to France, to UK, to Canada, wherever, to study and become, you know, good Africans. But at the same time, they were really good Africans gaining these capacities, but groomed and uh, you know, to, to feel good about being associated with the same people. You, you know, you, you're always even current, you say, oh, this is a, uh, anti West, this is, you know, you know, this is a Western. Uh, even before they are, when they, one of us becomes a leader on our continent, they say, is he, how is he with the West? <laughs> yeah, how is he, is he, is he our person? You know, there is no question of saying, is he an African, a good African, who is changing, you know, the lives of these people, our people, of, so, and then this leadership of the leaders to be dealing with this got caught up in this transition from the colonial times to independence times, and uh, somehow what is African got lost in between. Uh, and even when they are saying, is he, is he a good leader? Or is he, yeah, because you are a good leader in as far as you can be associated <laughs> with the, the West. Not, not with Africa. Uh -uh. Now, if what I'm saying might even not be accurate, Then, why do we have everything on this continent of actually leaders well educated and informed and gone through all kinds of challenges? Uh, we have the resources, we have, uh, you know, and uh, some are even characterized as being democratic and this and that. But it has not delivered this change I'm talking about. And we are there on our watch. And then there are troubles as of that time and that are similar as to those we have today. We have tribes fighting each other. We have people saying, you know, even for the same country. But when it comes to embracing those outside who feed us, or want to be seen to be good to us, then uh, 
you understand what what it follows they embrace them so i'm sure some of their questions i don't need to answer now they come when we bring them up about the conflicts about uh, all kinds of things about coups coup d'etats about this and discuss that but I just wanted to say you cannot find a solution um, relating to leadership or pan Africanism and the transformation that must happen in our continent without starting a little bit from uh, the historical background that I was talking about otherwise you can easily forget where you are coming from and uh, where we want to go that's why i brought up that uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, that bit of background so that we we, we can get uh, uh, started um yeah maybe i should do sort of uh, stop here but i wanted to really be in a sense provocative by raising this more to do with us than with others much as we have to sort out these problems that are caused by others uh, so uh, you are welcome and uh, can have more than one and a half hours you can have three uh, i'm here for that thank you